working with Debbie and friends. Cooking with Debbie and friends. We'll make some good food, talk about marriage and parenting too. Self care and budgeting, that's a recipe for life, yeah. Cooking with Debbie and friends. Everybody and welcome to Cooking with Debbie and Friends. Cooking with Debbie and Friends is a chat show we do right here in our kitchen with my husband, Susef, ma um, magician, musician, no, magician now. Okay. <laughs> and producer, <laughs> Travis Townsend. Right, so every Sunday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, we get together and we live stream to YouTube and Facebook. So if you're on one of those platforms, we just want to say hello. And so comment in the comment section, please. And we go to those platforms so that you can chat with us. And better yet, you can even chat with each other. We have high school reunions, family reunions, mm -hmm. people in the neighborhood um, reaching out, people on both coasts becoming friends and uh, going to their social media and having some fun. So we encourage you to do that and share, share, share. And if you're on YouTube right now, Push that like button. Push that thumbs up button subscribe. while you're watching it. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe. subscribe now. And for those of you that uh, may be checking this out after, I just put on the screen our um, the uh, username for face for YouTube. So please go there if you're on Facebook and hit that um, hit that subscribe button for us. Thank you very much. So my dad is the first one in the kitchen. Howdy doody family. Hey dad. And Martha Scott. Hello, Martha. Hi, Martha. Hi, Magician and Debbie from Mike Bilberry. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Mike. Uh, and Richard Connemacher is on with us, assuming Rhea is there too. Yes. Of course, there is our buddy Scott. Scott Hale Gomez. Yeah. Um, so let's do a little recap of what we did last Sunday. Last Sunday, we were here in our kitchen and we made... Pot, pot pot pies. We made turkey pot pies. With leftover turkey. With leftover turkey. And we did a fancy schmancy one done from scratch that took a little bit of our time. And we did a quick and easy one. And if you saw the little quick video, it was so cute, where it was just a can of this, a can of that, a shake of this, a shake of that, prepared pie crust. Yeah. And it was done. And We're calling um, those quick bites. Quick bites. So, so you can easily get to the recipe. Right. Hi, Suzanne. So uh, we had a friend of ours, Cynthia Felix, on Facebook. I don't know if she's joined us yet. Um, Cynthia did kind of a hybrid of the recipes. So she had some leftover vegetables. So she sautéed those up like we did on our show. And then she did the cream of mushroom soup. So she kind of did a hybrid, and she sent me a picture yeah, on Facebook. That, we're yeah, gonna show that photo right now. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that gorgeous. That is crust. so pretty. That is just she, gorgeous. Yeah, I love how she um, split the center and put those fancy little, fancy little um, things on there. Looks like a little flower on the top. Yeah, she did such a great job because you can do a good job putting the slits on the top to make a design. You can roll out extra pie cutters, pie uh, crust, and use cookie cutters and make cute um, little designs. But I like that rustic look. Yeah. I don't know, I just like that rustic look in cooking. I like the big chopped vegetables and the, you know, the. I just love that. And I'll tell you, like, if, if you're like me, um, Thanksgiving in that traditional meal is not really your favorite, this is a good way to keep that turkey going throughout the week and mix it up a little bit. Pot pie is always amazing. Yeah, and to be honest, we had so much filling. I think I said at the end of the show. We're gonna have to do two. We're gonna have to do two more, said, so. Oh man. <laughs> so we broke out some more pie crust and we made the tiny little mini pies because those are great for me to give to our daughter Pilar or to my niece Denise, that's her favorite food, or take to my mom's. And so we bake those and put them in the freezer so they're ready to give. Um, at any time. Loretta Roy Brown says, Bowen says, hey you two, look forward to learning about this recipe. Cajun shrimp sounds delicious. Yep, so yes. we are making Cajun shrimp today. It's a one sheet meal, but this is a little different than the one we did last night, right? Right, so we did one last night. Now here's my history with um, sheet pan meals. I've never made them before. So my friend, Scott Hale Gomez, sent me a picture. Oh, Debbie, you gotta try this recipe. It's all on one sheet. And it was a, um, a Greek marinated chicken from Rachel Ray. And the thing is, the oven has to be at 425. 
And so for those of you who were watching us earlier in the year, we had fires, we had temperatures of over 105 degrees, mm -hmm. and it was horrible to turn Way on our oven. Hot. We just Way could not hot. turn on the oven. So I told Scott, hang in there, I'm gonna give it a try when it cools off. So here it is, a balmy 75. Perfect weather for the, <laughs> for the oven to be on. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh wait, Diana said, I wanted to read this real quick. Sure. Because uh, first time I made pie, your pie crust was perfect, thanks. Diana made it, yay, my neighbor Diana yeah. said she's never made a, a pot pie. The pot pie, oh, they're so good. And Bill will probably thank you over and over every time you make those. <laughs> so you Let's... can make it with leftover chicken, leftover turkey, and you can even make a vegetarian version where it's nothing but vegetables in the pie crust, something nice and hearty and in one dish ready to go. And a lot of that we really just pulled from the pantry. So a lot of the ingredients or most of them with the leftover meat from turkey or chicken or whatever is really just uh, what you can pull from your pantry, which is something Debbie always likes to do. When Nobody you... wants to make extra runs to the store. And last night we made something and all I needed was two tablespoons of fresh parsley. But I remembered you can use your dry herbs, you just half it because the dry herbs are stronger. So I said, I've got dried parsley in my pantry, I'm just gonna use that. Maybe not as pretty and green as the parsley fresh, but you Yeah, know. but if the flavor is there, who cares? Yeah. yeah. So, so you were talking about Scott with that sheet pan dinner. Let's just show what that looked like and tell us what we're looking at here. Okay, so um, Scott sent me this picture and he made it from the Rachel Ray um, recipe. And you've got lemon, chicken thighs, Yukon potatoes, uh, fresh parsley, feta cheese, olive oil. So that's what he made. And he said, it is delicious. So... Um, I pulled what I could from my pantry to make this sheet pan dish. First thing I did was I bought sheet pans. And these run about 10 or $11 with Amazon. I'm not an Amazon, um, what do they call it? An Amazon uh, affiliate. affiliate or something. But yeah. I did get those on Amazon, delivered to your doorstep, quick and easy, no contact. And we use and these for everything. Everything. Including when I barbecue, I prep my meat on this and take it out to the grill. And all the stuff we cook in here, I put the turkey um, tin foil thing on top of this because they're not really all, always stable. Mm -hmm. And Debbie uses this for a lot of different meals. Too. Everything. And the Pioneer Woman, I read her cookbook cover to cover, and she said that she, her favorite is this dented one that she uses to go in and out of the rain because yeah. sometimes hail hits it and that's how it got its dents. Hail? Hail. Hit her cookie sheet. Her baking sheet. Okay. She said she was stuck between, you know, they have like an outdoor lodge yeah. and then the kitchen indoors. So she got stuck. So all she had was the baking oh, pan. Oh, she used it for The a, sheet for pan. A so cover. she turned it over and used it okay. for a cover. There. <laughs> Your dad says it's 43 degrees there. And that's why oh we don't gosh. live in Illinois, dad, because it's 43 <laughs> degrees there. So, um, Travis, do you want to show what we did last night or yeah. are we going to go to this first? Well, Should well, we get this in the oven yeah, first? Yeah, let's, let's get this in the oven okay. first and then we'll show the video from last night. So most sheet pan dinners are one and done, do it and forget it. Like the one that Scott sent and the one that we did yesterday because we did make a version of this. And um, so one or most one and done, you put everything in your big bowl, you marinate it, you coat it, you put it together and everybody plays nicely on the sheet pan and you don't even peek at it until it's done. But some of them require steps. Today's Cajun shrimp and potatoes requires steps. So uh, we're gonna do the first step here. So um, this recipe is loosely based on cream de la crumb from Pinterest and um, again you know with me if you have red potatoes use it if you have Yukon use it if you have the little tiny purple and white ones use those mm, those are good <laughs> I like those ones <laughs> <laughs> they're good and they're pretty so uh, I've got some red potatoes here these are nice hearty red potatoes and what I'm gonna do with the red potatoes Just show the people on the camera what sure each sure I've got one tablespoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of butter melted and we're gonna pour that right in there so um, you got your little spatula? I don't. Okay. <laughs> so right. Hang in with me, Loretta. This is going to be so That's easy. This is going to be life-changing because I know you cook for a family, and this is life-changing. And can I just say something, Please. Loretta? 
Um, a lot of what, what we do, we take our time. We're showing on the camera. We're showing the steps. Debbie puts things in these nice little cups and everything. That adds a lot of time to this. So if you're going to be making these meals, normally you could just cut the time in half and, and realize that this one, in fact, is very, very quick if you're not doing it for presentation. But we're doing it for presentation. So, And the beauty behind this, you're dirtying one sheet pan, one bowl. It's fantastic. Right. So I'm putting these potatoes in this bowl with my butter and with my olive oil. And then we're going to spray this with Pam. You can use a parchment sheet. You can use um, a silicone sheet. Never, ever spray your pan when it is on the oven. You don't want to do that. That can cause a flame. All right. Yes, so, all right. So, Travis, can you turn that over for me on there? Now, we're going to put these potatoes all over the sheet pan. But when we add our shrimp and sausage, we're actually going to move them to one side. There you go. Now, now we're going to Yeah, you want to make it one layer, right. right? The oven is a screaming hot oven, 425 degrees. Now, does it matter if they're touching or you probably you don't, don't want them You don't want them. You want a lot of air in okay. between. All right. That's a good note. Yeah. So I was just going to clump them together. No, no, no. They need time to just breathe. They need to breathe. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do that. And we're going to bake this for about 15, 17 minutes. So in a screaming hot oven. Oh, wait. Wait. I'm frozen. I know. Which way am I going? I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Wait. Okay. Look at your notes, lady. I am. Yeah, go. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, so we put those uh, red potatoes that were quartered in with... No, bring them out! Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I knew there was something else we were forgetting. What was it? What did you forget? Cajun sauce. Oh, you don't okay. want to forget the Cajun so sauce. So we got to put this back in. Oh, okay. Hi, welcome to Debbie Cooking with Debbie and Friends. <laughs> hey, Paula, you just tuned in at the right time. We just started. <laughs> we you just haven't started. missed anything. You haven't missed a thing. Okay. Um, okay. So Here's the thing with this recipe. It's made in different stages, and a lot of the ingredients, in fact, I told Travis before we went on, I go, let's be careful because a lot of the ingredients are the same and the same amounts. This one? So, hang on. So they're in these little cups and everything that we use. But the thing is that we're using the same for the sausage, the same for the shrimp, the same for the potatoes. Same spices. The same spices, yeah. the same butter, the same olive oil. So the same ingredients. So sometimes I get a little mixed up. Okay, so now well, I'm going to put in. Not normally, but today you did. Today I did. So, and then I forgot Cajun seasoning. This Cajun seasoning is homemade. You can buy it, of course. And the Cajun seasoning is going to go in at every single step of this recipe. Do we want to maybe someday do a quick bite on this? Because we Would use love to. Cajun seasoning a lot. Yeah. I love Cajun food. It's going to make me sneeze in a minute, so I might want to back, back away. away. Okay. While you're backing away, I'm going to tell Loretta. Oh, that's she, coated. Yeah, that's, that's coated. Let's, so, show, let's show the people on this one. What's in this seasoning? And I'm happy to post it if you would like to see it. Two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of dried Italian seasoning, two teaspoons of paprika, um, smoked paprika if you have oh, it, smoked paprika. one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of cracked bell black pepper, unless you're doing from the shaker, which I did and from the shaker, it's only a quarter teaspoon, one half teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. So all that is in this Cajun seasoning right here. Did you get that, Loretta? Garlic powder, dried Italian seasoning, paprika, cayenne, onion powder, cracked black pepper, salt, and crushed red pepper. I got these cute little jars at, um, at uh, Joann's. And they came in a four pack with the little lids. They're little tiny mason jars. And I use this for everything for like um, a dressing for us for one night. Just put it in there and give it a little shaky shaky. I use it for my seasonings. They just came in the, they're just the perfect little so, size. So she has little hands. But you can tell that's a, that's a little jar. And these are perfect. Now we use the bigger ones for my yogurt in the morning and other stuff. Um, walnuts and things. But these are perfect for your seasonings. 
And if you're like us and you like to have those that particular seasoning or a fajita mix, things like that. Yeah, fajita mix. Those are um, perfect. These are perfect. Fajita mix, chili mix, um, maybe even like a steak seasoning I make for Travis for his steaks. So just make sure it's got a label on there because sometimes when all your seasonings play together, you're like, uh, it could be curry, could be chili. Maybe we have curry chili tonight. Smell it. <laughs> no, don't smell it. How um, long does that go in for Loretta you? said, sure, post the recipe for the seasoning. We will, Loretta. And I get most of my seasonings off Pinterest. And, you know, when you have some time and all your seasonings are out, go ahead and start making your little jars. Make I would make one fajita, one chili, one Cajun. Now, when you say chili, we have some Hispanic people watching. We also have some white chili people beans. from the Midwest. Chili beans. Okay. Okay. So fajitas, chili for chili beans, fajita mix, and Cajun seasoning. Yes. That's little, four little jars. Label them and put them in there. And that's like half your cooking right there is, you know, getting all the jars and everything out. Yeah. So, all right. So that is in the oven. Sorry, Travis, about that. I am so sorry. That's all right. We're all right. Good. Now we did, uh, we have another step to this and that is the shrimp. The potatoes are baking. So while the potatoes are baking. For how long? For 15. Okay. About 15 to 17 minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a video because we actually made the. The Greek chicken and potatoes last night. Right. Now what we did a little differently is we used boneless, skinless thighs. Because that was what was on sale when I happened to fill our freezer. What we had. Yeah. It's what we had. You don't want to be going out in the cold and the wind and to go make runs. You want to keep all your grocery runs tight, right? And if you're going to the grocery store, pick up the phone and call a neighbor, call your sister, call your kids. Hey, does anybody need anything from the store so that you're not making all these trips? for different things. Yeah. All right, so Sunday afternoon, sis, is a great time to relax and think about food, isn't it, Teresa? Oh, Teresa, I gotta give you a, a call or an email. I sure would love to talk to you. Um, uh, Netflix needs a to give you a comedy special. We need, oh, thank you. We need you and laughter in this time. I've been a fan for a long time. Love my Pandora because they always play your comedy album. Oh my album. gosh, that's, that's awesome, cool. Ray. Thank, thank you for you, sharing Ray. that. And you know, I made myself laugh with this cute little video that Travis made when we talked to Ian Bag on our we podcast. We talked to Ian Bag on our podcast, and that man just made me laugh so hard. And Travis made a cute little video. If you haven't seen it, go on on to Instagram. Instagram you or YouTube, Facebook has it. He made me laugh so hard. Now that was a long, long podcast. We promise you. From now on, especially those of you watching back east, we're going to keep them shorter and simple. Yeah. This Tuesday, actually, ah, Teresa says they beat Tony, 34 degrees here in Indianapolis. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, um, so wait, let, Debbie's about to tell who's going to be here on Tuesday. But first, let me remind you guys and let some of you know, if you don't know, we stopped recording on Tuesdays and Thursdays to make room for a different format. We always just kind of touch on conversations here mm -hmm. in, in the cooking show, which is live stream, and we interact with you guys. Mm -hmm. And we kind of miss out on some of the, the, the more hearty, meatier parts of the conversation. So what we wanted to do was take that into a podcast talk show format, invite some guests in, and really get into some of those conversations. So Tuesdays, we now dedicate to the podcast, live stream just like we were before, 7 p.m. Pacific, we bring in some awesome guests, and, and last week we had Ian Bag, my favorite comedian. We went a long time, but that's yeah. because Ian and I hadn't talked in a long time. And for those of you watching, that's kind of the banter that goes on in what's called the green room. The green room is a holding place where the comics go, or in your, if you're on a television show and you're on an ensemble, they put you all in one room. And so that was kind of the, the chat that goes on, and it did go long, and... We apologize for that. They're going to be shorter, yeah. I promise. Mike Bilbury watched three of Ian Bagg's videos on YouTube. Isn't he funny? He's Mike, hilarious. and if he's funny on YouTube, you've got to be in a club because he is amazing. His crowd work is ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. And the whole crowd is laughing Brilliant. so hard, their stomach hurts when they leave. And if you don't laugh that hard, then you don't know what Something wrong is. with you. Yeah, something wrong with um, you. So, uh, so what we have coming up on this Tuesday is Brad Garrett and his lovely wife, Izzy Garrett. Really, Brad's just there for eye candy. Yeah, like me. Uh, <laughs> I'm here for eye candy. I'm not, I don't really serve a purpose. Isabel, his wife, is an amazing chef and baker. 
and she does plant-based cooking and I'm really interested in her plant-based efforts not just in her blogs but her recipes and brad is there to testify at how delicious these recipes are so we've collected some questions if you would like to add to that if you have any questions for isabel garrett regarding um plant-based cooking vegetarian or vegan mm -hmm. then please uh submit those and she will try to answer as many as she can on air. So yes. we will be having her on. Um, oh, I thought I was. I thought I had a um, an email address that I could put up real quick, but I don't have it there. We it's will just cooking with Debbie at gmail .com. Debbie is spelled D E B I, just like mm -hmm. the show. And um, and even if it's not necessarily something you're thinking, well, I'm going to switch to be a vegan or be a vegetarian. Maybe you just want to cut back on some of your red meat. Maybe your doctor said your cholesterol is a little high yeah. and that you should eat more cheese but cut back everywhere else. Maybe this is a good alternative for you. So um, Isabel actually is Brad's wife. And like I said, she is a vegetarian. Then she went on to be a vegan. And slowly she's kind of converting Brad's diet. So I would love to talk to him about the taste, the texture, um, if he feels better. But Isabel is really the star of that show, and that is Tuesday. Yeah. And the Tuesday after that, yeah, girl. I'm so excited. She's very excited. We booked Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Santa Claus. Now, this is not for your What's children. Name? Well, I got her from, uh, she's a good friend of Cheryl Anderson, the soccer mom, who is a phenomenal comedian. You've seen her all over TV, and she's a good friend of Mrs. Claus. Yeah. And Cheryl was able to get us Mrs. Claus. And this is not for your children. Please don't bring your children or your grandkids around to see Mrs. Claus. But if they happen to be in the room, she's not going to spoil any surprises or anything like that. So. No, no, no. But she might be, you know, Mrs. Claus enjoys a cocktail or something. She two. might drop the F bomb. So, no, she getting. won't. <laughs> she won't do that. But uh, she might come close. She might. She might um, shed some secrets on uh, Santa being the hero she's in the conversation that we had she was already sort of venting a little frustration <laughs> so she might uh, share some of that um but but it's going to be an interesting conversation with mrs claus i'm sure she has a first name i don't know what it is we'll ask her what her first yeah. name is but uh you know for those of you who would like to look up her friend it's cheryl the soccer mom and she's on twitter and she's actually followed by barack obama who knew? So, um, what, Mrs. Claus? Yes. Yeah, girl. Yeah. And uh, so she'll be on. And like I said, not for the children. This is kind of a grown-up version of Mrs. Claus. Not the sexy grown-up. Woohoo! But, you know, like I said, she might be uh, knocking one back while she's telling us about the woes of being married to a man who you think only works one day a year. What do you think she drinks? Peppermint schnapps or something? Oh, yeah, she probably does. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. So, anyways, hit one more, hit one more um, comment, and then let's show this video from okay. last night. Should uh, you should create a Selena dish or drink in honor to the Netflix series? And when when Selena died, what was your reaction? Ray, you know, I was up for that film. I was up for the murderer, and they kept bringing me in and bringing me in. And then Jennifer Lopez actually said to me, she said, "Mamita, you don't want this part." And she said, "These fans are nuts." And so. Uh, so I heated that and... I think Lupi Antavaros did the part of... Yeah, Lupi Antavaros came in and, and God rest her soul, beautiful woman. Yeah. And so she played the part of the killer. But I remember them coming in to makeup and they kept telling the makeup artists about me, make her uglier, make her uglier. <laughs> yeah, and she's cute now, but she was just cute as a button back then with her little super curly hair and... Yeah, that must have been hard to do. Yeah. So anyways, I haven't seen the new Selena movie. I would love to. Um, that's on our list. So Mrs. Claus, how fun, right, Suzanne? But don't bring the grandkids. So anyway, so Mrs. Claus will be on with us the following Tuesday. And now, let's... let's look at what we made last night. I had boneless chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I had Yukon potatoes, and I always have olive oil handy. So my uh, Greek chicken and potatoes had uh had some potatoes the chicken lemon juice minced lemon garlic. zest minced garlic kosher salt and pepper oregano. which is always there oregano dried oregano i think is the secret to a really good greek taste oh, um so good. 
And if you want to add Greek olives to this, you can. I think Scott did or didn't. I'm not sure. And you can always put feta cheese on top before you serve, which is also another really Greek flavor. But I didn't have those on hand, so uh, I just made your basic, and we thought, we're going to film it, and if it turns out great, we'll tell you on the show. Okay, here it goes. Today we're going to make Greek chicken and potatoes all on one sheet pan. Start with half a cup of olive oil, one third cup lemon juice, one teaspoon of lemon zest, two teaspoons of kosher salt and one teaspoon of pepper, one tablespoon of minced garlic, two teaspoons of dried oregano. Give it a good whisk, add six chicken thighs, add some cut potatoes, Make sure everything's nice and coated. Coat a sheet pan with cooking spray. Arrange the chicken and potatoes in a single layer. Bake for approximately 45 minutes in a 400 degree oven. Chicken and potatoes rich with the flavor of oregano, lemon, olive oil, and just deliciousness. That was amazing. It was really that good. That meal was very good. Yeah. So Scott um, Hale Gomez, thank you for suggesting sheet pan dinners. We really liked it. It was fast, and except for we were recording it, but putting it together and putting it in. Fast. Even recording it took 10 minutes. Yeah. And then we threw it in the oven all together. That meal was just all together. Uh -huh. Like This is different. If there's one thing I could do differently with that meal is when I serve it, cut the potatoes and take some of that oil and that mixture, that marinade, and put it on the potatoes. Because after when I was cleaning up, I sort of sopped up one with a potato and, and just went, oh my God, the sauce. That, you do that for you. <laughs> yeah, that lemon oil, oregano, I gotta garlic, be careful. and butter. Oh, it was so good like that. So I would do that differently yeah. next time. Chop up and the for potatoes. Loretta, who's a new cook, you never want to save that marinade and use it again. Once you use it, you use it. The rest has to go down the drain. You never save like a meat marinade or a fish marinade. You know, that all needs to go down the drain. It just is not safe for you to eat like that. Just a note on marinades. All right, now we're good. Our chicken's gonna, our potatoes are gonna come out in a little bit. Same bowl, didn't wash it, didn't wash it. That's what I love about this meal. Now I'm putting in about a pound and a half of- Do you wanna show the people? Raw shrimp. I wanna show you guys. Sure. That's just raw shrimp. We took the shells, we took the tails off so that um, we're not chewing on uh, tails. What is wrong with you? I don't know why. I, I was trying to you? figure out what to say there and I just Go kind put of your skates gave on. up right in the middle. Of the... By the way, for those of you that watched during his birthday, like right before his birthday, he yes. got his skates. Yes, I did. He I got, got his them skates. yesterday. Yeah. Um, Debbie, it's good to have you always. We don't care if you're late. Come on in. So uh, let's see. So now I've got my shrimp in the same bowl that I did the potatoes. Now what I'm going to put in the shrimp is uh, I'm going to put in... Uh, two tablespoons of butter that's been melted and um, right in there. Oh, it's not melted anymore. <laughs> Sorry, right. stick it in. Are you, Do you sure? Do you want me to throw it in the micro? 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. All right. In the time we had set up, it, it uh, yeah. got a little solid. And then we also have one teaspoon of that Cajun seasoning that we made. That goes in there. There you go. Not too long, babe. So that's all playing there. And the reason I picked this dish is one, because it's fast, and two, because Travis loves anything Cajun. And then we're gonna put in the melted butter there. All mm. that goes in. I actually went to New Orleans and, um, and, and went to a local that was a bus driver, and I said, where do you take your family when you wanna go out for some authentic food? And she pointed me to a couple places, Mother's, and then there's a, a place that's got, a, I can't remember right now. I think it, there's a Mother's in Vegas, too. Oh, yeah. Um, it's got like an Irish name, but it, but it's apparently the best food in New Orleans. And it was a little uh, um, neck and neck with them. But you got to go to New Orleans at some point if you love Cajun food. If you can't, try this meal. This is amazing. Now, we happen to have some sausage. We always have this sausage, this postal kielbasa on hand, we always have it. Because if you have this in an apple, or this in a pear, or this in onions, this makes a great dish to put on top of rice. Breakfast. You, you can, can do, do breakfast. Do it's versatile meat, it, sorry. Yeah, so um, if you have an apple or a pear, 
an onion, you just slice all that up, you put it in some butter, you cook it in your in your cast iron skillet, serve it over rice, there you go. Or like Travis was saying, breakfast. It's delicious as a side for breakfast, it's delicious as inside an omelet. Or just chop it hot dog size, throw it on the grill and then put it in a big bun. So there's a lot you can do with that. We usually keep at least one or two of these either in the freezer or fridge so we can use them. So I've got this shrimp here and all that butter and Cajun. And we're going to put that. Now, this is something I want to add. And I don't want to take from the butter in my... Um, Travis, I don't want to take from the butter in my... How are you doing there? It's hot on my face. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to take away from the butter in this? In this. So I'm okay. thinking maybe a little bit of olive oil on here just to give it a little coat. Yeah, just to... Um, yeah. Just to give it something to stick to with the... Um, yeah. So just a quick uh, dash. Yeah. There's a lot there. Don't freak out on me, lady. Yeah, and then I think I'm going to pinch a little bit of the Cajun seasoning in here. Yeah. Because I want the flavor to go far. I don't want it to have to play with too many things. How's the potatoes? They look great. Okay. Do they look about halfway done? Yeah. Okay, let's bring them out. Yeah, I would say um, you want it over here. Well, before you do that, let me say this. I love Samin Nostrat. She wrote Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. I love her. I love her podcast, Home Cooking. I love everything about her. I love her cookbooks. However, when it comes to sheet pan meals, she acts like if you are cooking live babies in your oven. She oh freaks out. What are you doing? No, no. If you really love your family and friends, you cook every food on a separate sheet pan. I love you. I love you very much. Not enough to dirty six sheet pans. We don't have sh six sheet pans. I wouldn't want you. And I love her. <laughs> so I wouldn't want her in this kitchen trying to make some crazy good meal when this is going to come out tasting amazing. And then she can get back over to the living room and hang out with us faster. So Right. So as much as I love Samin, I do disagree. I mean, if they're two completely different flavors and they're not going to play together nicely, yeah, by all means, do maybe two sheet pans. However, most of us cooks are busy. And this is the reason I chose these recipes for the beginning of December. Christmas is still coming. Christmas Eve, Christmas, cookie exchange, um, buying gifts, all that is still going to happen even in the age of, of COVID. So I want you to have a dinner that's quick and easy and ready to go. Debbie girl, you're not late. You're right on time. Can we, we add are a making... little bit more uh, spice on this sure. too? Because I like that when I get a bite of that sausage, I want to taste that heat, that spice. There you go. From this. Now this uh, pulsa kielbasa is all we already cooked. So I'm not too worried about its cook time. It just needs to get a little brown. Um, so welcome, Debbie girl. All right. So. That was what I had to say about sheet pan dinners. I disagree with some cooks out there that say, and she was cooking like, um, she was cooking like different vegetables on different sheet pans. And she had like six. So she was still doing a sheet pan meal, just different sheet pans. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, us. let's move this aside so okay. I can put these let's potatoes right get our potatoes right here. up here. Watch your, watch your hand. Okay. Ooh. We're going to move these to one side. We're going to move those to one side. Not like the one we did last night. Last night everybody played great together and we didn't even have to worry about it. And now it's okay if they touch like this. Yes. Okay. Isn't that pretty? It's those gorgeous. potatoes look so pretty. Now gorgeous. the potatoes aren't done. They need another like, you know. 15 minutes? No, no. They only need like another. Uh, uh, oh Travis, God, why did you throw good. me off? I don't know why I threw you off. What did you do? <laughs> um. Talk on it, Travi. Well, this table must. I'm gonna find okay. out. In the okay. meantime, uh, we'll put this together. Okay. In on the here. meantime, you put the that and we then the that. shrimp mixture. Okay. You take this, and I'm just gonna put this, guys. I'm gonna go uh, flatten this out a little bit just so that they cook a little bit uh, more right. crisp. I like the crisp uh, sausage on there, and this. And the shrimp in a layer for six minutes or until opaque. Remember, shrimp cooks up fast. So they need to be in a single layer. You want to finish sure. that and then I'll move it to the oven. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Well, the spices already, as soon as you open that little jar, you're going to smell the, the spices and it really does smell amazing. Now you already have your potatoes and you have your meat here or your fish 
and you have your meat. So you have that all ready. Yeah. You could serve this up if you're a carb lover. You could serve this up with corn on the cob. You could serve it with grits. Um, in our house, we do side salads for everything because we're really trying to watch mm -hmm. what goes into our bodies right now. Plus, so salads do... are good for you. All right. So that's going to go that in. kind of the same thing anyway. Yeah. Six minutes. There you go. All right. Do you have any comments so far? We have time. We have six minutes for comments. Debbie Grow, you came in a little late. We're going to have Mrs. Claus visiting us with this. Not, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, we're going to have Mrs. Claus. She is not for the faint of heart. This is not the Mrs. Claus to bring your children to come see. This is the Mrs. Claus that we adults could all relate to. Yeah. She's um, a little tired. A little frustrated. I don't think she gets uh, the credit that she deserves. No. So we're going to give her the microphone and let her get her credit that is due. Um, so we're making that. So uh, we're going to have Mrs. Claus, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, Debbie Grow. We're having Isabel Garrett, bride of Brad Garrett, who is a cook who specializes in vegan and vegetarian cooking and baking. And she will answer all your cooking and baking questions. I do want to say, Travis and I can stop and talk to you during our cooking show, but during our podcast, we don't, we won't have time all the time to break away and talk to you during, you know, if you're asking questions. Yeah, it's not, it's not so much interaction with, um, with the comments as it is, talking to the guests, but we definitely will have a Q&A time. So we encourage you throughout to ask questions and we'll scroll back through. Right. Because we are watching the comments during the show because I've got a monitor above the camera yeah. and we're kind of looking. About the food. And, it, you know, yeah. we'd love it yeah. to be about the food. Like I said, Brad Garrett, I know you guys all know him, love him from Everybody Loves Raymond and Fargo and... And uh, yeah, he's been in so many so much cartoon yeah. voices and yeah. just amazing. So we all know you all love him, but like I said, he's there for eye candy and is the taster. <laughs> well, I think I think what Debbie's getting at is what Brad has actually said. You know, he doesn't he's not very um, self centered in that way. He wants to talk about his career. He's there to to help Izzy talk about her lifestyle blog, which she has mm -hmm. fake blonde uh, real, real life dot com. And her cooking and how he has used it to transition to better health. So Brad will answer questions and stuff like that. But we kind of want to keep it away from the, the Hollywood stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because this is about, you know, I mean, of course, if you love him, let him know you love him. But we will be basically taking questions about the cooking. Yeah. So um, anyway, so. Uh, what do you have there? I have pretzels here. Now. Um, what I did this weekend is I made a lot of pretzels for uh, family and friends that we usually do cookie exchange with or, you know, food gift exchange. So this weekend I put on a Christmas movie and I laid everything out and I did my pretzels. And um, for the first time I bought my pretzels in a tub at Aldi for like five bucks instead of the candy store and these pretzels were great they held up wonderfully to the chocolate they didn't break they didn't break when we were wrapping them yeah normally when when she's done drizzling and doing all the fancy stuff i go through with a big knife and i'll cut them to separate them and take them off of the wax paper and normally with the other candy store um, pretzels i'll break three or four of them and then i have to eat those of course because we don't want them to go to waste but um, so for those that of, didn't happen with these. <laughs> so for those of you who would like to know how to make these, please go back to our October 29th episode. It was the Dia de las Muertas episode. And this used to be my friend Paul um, Ames' favorite treat. And we made them that day in his honor. All you have to do, follow the same recipe as on October 29th. All you have to do is change out the jimmies. And a jimmy is a little sprinkle candy. All you have to do is change from the orange and the black and the little ghost to green and red for Christmas or blue and white for Hanukkah. And then I ran out of caramel and I ran out of, uh, of Jimmy's. And so what I did was I just took the pretzels because these are caramel wrapped pretzels. So this is caramel. When you say caramel wrapped is twisted. Twisted around. around um, and so I made these pretzels, which are my standard pretzels. Mm -hmm. And then I 
did not put caramel around these. This was easy. This was just a dip and a dip and you're done. Yeah, but tell, tell me what you've got in your right hand here. Sure. That looks amazing. Okay, so um, my right hand. This is coconut. I had shredded coconut. So I dipped these in dark chocolate and then I put coconut and I had Travis taste test it yesterday because I wasn't sure if the salt would go with the coconut and... It, yeah, does. it does. It was delicious. But this one too. That's this one is. Food. I had a bag of M and M's, um, almond covered M and M's, and so I just smashed it up in a rolling pin, uh, with a rolling pin in a bag, and that's what I did to make these. So these are my beautiful pretzels, and if you would like to make these uh, for Christmas. A little faster than cookies it's a little different kind of gift to give they're all individually wrapped which is really nice this time of year you know to present something to somebody that it's already wrapped so these are the christmas pretzels that i made please go back to our past episode did yeah. you keep an eye on how long the shrimp uh, yeah yeah actually i'm, I'm watching and it. it is about right now are they pink and Six opaque minutes. and pretty oh yes do they need another minute? They need. They might need a little, a little bit more. What do you think? Oh so no, because... they're almost done. I would give them a little, like a little taste, and let them stay in there for like two minutes. Oh, it's out of my face. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there you a go. Little taste. You want me to taste it? No, no. Oh, you said give it a taste. We will give it a little taste. Oh yeah. Okay. Ah, can't see. I'm over here, trap. I'm over here. Okay. Okay, we need a plate to, to, to taste. Loretta, are you still hanging in there with me? Um, Loretta, it's so easy to go to Pinterest and get yourself some recipes for sheet pan dinners. The, the hardest thing is going to be ordering the sheet pan, really. And like I said, I ordered mine on Amazon, and it sure has come in handy. Remember, those shrimps are going to be ready in just a moment. Yeah, really. shrimp is something that you don't want to overcook because it becomes rubbery. rubbery. Very difficult to eat. Yeah. It's real chewy. Yeah. Um, and um, this particular meal, I, I, you know, I've never made shrimp in a pan like this inside of the oven. So you just got to be, be careful to watch it. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. What Travis has there that he's going to uh, melt again for me, because again, it came to room temperature, is I've got butter, honey, and um, some garlic. I've got the garlic here, and he's going to make sure that butter liquefies for me again. Hey, for the holidays, go ahead and buy yourself some real butter. I mean, I know Iz is going to come on here and she's going to tell us alternatives. Some substitutes, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, if you aren't vegan or vegetarian, buy yourself some unsalted, Loretta, unsalted butter for your holiday cooking. You can always add salt. You can't take it out. All right. Oh, uh, hi, guys. Any Hatch New Mexico green chili ideas? Oh, yes. my gosh. We just throw them on the grill. We yes. throw them on the grill or we throw them on a griddle and we use them for just everything, you know, mm -hmm. and then I slice them up. We use them in chilies. We use them in tacos. We use them omelets. Omelets. We use them on top of steaks. Oh my oh, gosh. On top of a steak yeah. too, with a little real butter and yeah. some. So what I have here, speaking of butter, so is I've got butter and, oh, get, the, get that out. Okay. Sorry. But we need to, that reminds me, thanks for reminding me, Tom, we need to get some more of those peppers. Down. Yeah, but you know what? It has such a short season. I think where he lives, it's available year round. We're going to show the people. Okay. Look at that. that look, the shrimp has a nice pink color. The potatoes look nice and, and good. Ah, that's a little hot. Right. So what I have here is I've got the honey, the butter, and some minced garlic. And mm. I'm just putting that on top. Oh, this is, I'm, I'm get another. this so pretty. This is so pretty. I'm going to even put it on the potatoes here. So all this was, was honey and butter and creme de la creme is the Pinterest post I got it from. That should be easy to remember. I will always, always, always give credit. I'm going to be making Christmas cookies. And if you're already thinking about making yours, I use Sally's Baking Addiction. I don't go anywhere else. Sally's Baking Addiction is awesome. And we're going to have a cookie 101. Ooh, that was a lot of garlic right there. As long as you're eating it and I'm eating it, we'll be okay. I know. It's the whole mask thing. Yeah. Oh, that's true. 
the other day after we ate something, I was like, Where, who's making Italian food? <laughs> oh, it's this mask. Um, Rhea says, Hi, Rhea. Let's see. Unsalted butter is a little fresher, too. And then um, Richard says, unsalted butter tastes better on toast, too. Right. Yeah, it does. And speaking of salt, can I say a quick thing about the kosher salt? If you watch Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, the one episode you definitely want to catch is the one about salt. Because um, Samin Nostrat talks about different kinds of salt. And when you invest in a kosher salt, it makes the table salt on the table, it, you start to taste that the minerals in that. And the kosher salt is just a nice, fresh, beautiful flavor flavor. Mm -hmm. I prefer unsalted butter for its flavor, but the difference is not just the salt. I used to make my own butter. Wow. Unsalted butter is made with sweet cream. Yes. And salted butter is made from cream that has been soured. There you go. Who knew? I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. I always use the unsalted just because it's just, I can always add salt yeah. to a recipe. Yeah. So, um, if you want a head start, go to Sally's Baking Addiction. Uh, for her cookie recipe and her cookie tips. All right, Travis, are you ready for yeah, this? I'm ready. All right. And I'm wondering, um, because I, I love that Cajun stuff, if if we can put a little bit on the side, I want to taste it without, and then maybe add a little bit more of the Cajun of seasoning. Huh? All right, we're going to build you the perfect bite here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Listen to my husband. Yeah, put some more of those, yes. Well, you're just taking a bite for show. Yeah, okay. If that's what there you, you go. If you yeah. want to put a little dried uh, parsley or something for color, you can. Can't really see on It there. does look delicious. We have new messages. I'm going to give you a fork and a knife so you can start with this. Making butter is hard. Yes, it is, Pilar. It's a long... Uh... Okay. What's the difference between kosher and sea salt? Um, well, obviously the sea salt... Well, all salt comes from the sea. No, it doesn't. Wait. Oh my gosh, Loretta, you asked me a question I wasn't quite prepared to answer. I do cook with both. I use a flaky sea salt and I use kosher salt, but I will get you the answer and I will Facebook message you that answer. But Loretta, do you have Netflix? Let me know if you have Netflix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a hint of that, of that honey too. That was interesting. Uh-huh. So what I did was I poked the potato, got a little piece of that sausage and a shrimp on there, so it was a bite with all three of it. I'm gonna try it. It didn't look like it because it doesn't look blackened. So I thought I might put a little extra seasoning on there. That's got some heat already. Remember, taste <clears throat> before you season. Yeah, I wouldn't put extra seasoning on. That is seasoned so perfectly. Can you grab my best friend's cookbook? Mm -mm. I'm not your best friend anymore. You broke up with her, remember? Loretta? No, I just disagreed with her on something. Loretta, this is the book that you want to get. Not the book you want to get. This is the documentary based on this cookbook, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. And she talks about the different kinds of salt to put in your cooking, the different kinds of fat, the different kinds of acidic flavor we add, and heat. There's four episodes. Um, she also has an amazing podcast called Home Cooking. And it's really good. Oh, look at Martha Scott. Some salt comes from ancient seas like Himalayan pink salt. There you go. Um, so, Loretta, it, once you read the book, you'll realize what different kinds of salt you can use. Some finishing salt is so pretty. It's a little more expensive, but it's pretty on a salad. Uh, we use it because it's pretty for a picture. Mm -hmm. And um, Isabella, Izzy, uses salt um on her cookies that gives it a taste and a sparkle on the top. Here I go. Do it. Is that delicious? I'm going to show this bite. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Perfect shrimp. You got the sausage, the potatoes. It doesn't oh. look over over seasoned at all no but you taste it on the back end every bit of it right yeah you it's great at the beginning but then on the back end you yeah. still have it there you but the first thing i tasted as far as like an extra flavor was the honey with the the garlic that little butter honey garlic mm -hmm. thing and then as i was chewing up of course you get the shrimp the sausage uh potato you feel all that and then you really get that heat from all those spices this is really 
a very easy and perfectly cooked meal. Right. And the chicken last night was fantastic. So thank you, Scott uh, Gomez, for that. Mm. Yummy. So what we did today is we, yesterday, we made the Greek chicken that was delicious. Oh, Lemieux, hi. Make it. It's easy. You know, always keep a bag of frozen shrimp. Always, always, always keep a bag of frozen shrimp when it's on sale. Vaughn's does this $5 Friday. It comes $5. But, you know, keep those because you can chop it up for It's so quick. How many of us go, oh, I have nothing defrosted. Now what? Shrimp defrosts in a moment. And you can, it's so versatile. So, um, I love Cajun too, Mike. And I'm going to put down the ingredients for the spice because you can use it on practically anything. Start with the recommended amount of spice. Don't add more because you don't see it on there. Okay, please don't because you're not going to see garlic and onion powder, but you certainly do taste it. Thank you. My meal looks great. It does. All right, guys. It tastes amazing too. It tastes great. So we made the Greek, um, the Greek chicken thighs with the Yukon potatoes. We made the shrimp with I used red potatoes. You can use any other kind you like. And we added some um, pulsa kielbasa to it. And we also um, are referring you back to our October 29th pretzel recipe because you can make these pretzels for Christmas and Hanukkah. You can even do like a cute little glitter if you want to do for New Year's. And so refer back to that. Our lovely flowers are always from Fadi's. And if you use Fadi's, ask for Rosa or Jasper. They range with love. And if you can't, just support a local business. Please do. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. Florist really took a hit during the pandemic. Um, so um, we can't wait for you to join us on Tuesday if you have any vegan or vegetarian questions. We already have a whole bunch submitted, but if you have one and it hasn't been asked yet, we will be happy to include it in the conversation with Isabel Garrett, wife of Brad Garrett. We love you guys. Cooking with Debbie and friends. See you, baby. guys i like that big grand movement i know you do that was delicious everyone should make this meal I'm it's not delicious even joking. it was easy it was really easy if i didn't have to transfer into all these little dishes it would have been shake shake done done right so good